I'm really excited today to talk about something that no one talks about, right? I agree, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. So our topic today is, is, uh, is chronic abacterial prostatitis, otherwise known as uh, chronic pelvic pain syndrome uh, in males. And, um, you know, I guess a quick introduction. I'm Dr. Christian Ruder, a physiatrist. I'm with the Pelvic Rehabilitation and Medicine here in New York City. Uh, I actually specialize in uh, pelvic pain in both males and females, uh, pretty much from a nerve and muscle standpoint. Um, this is uh, Dr. Jessica Prost. She's a physical therapist. I'll kind of let you uh, jump in really quickly to introduce yourself. Thanks. Yes, thank you so much. I'm Dr. Jessica Probst. I'm a, a physical therapist. I'm also, I have a, a PRPC, a Pelvic Rehabilitation Practitioner Certification, Manual Therapy Certification. And I love doing advanced manual therapy, as well as working with um, people of all genders to, and all ages to help them with their pelvic floor problems. So we have a clinic here in the heart of Washington, DC. And I think it's enormous fun. I'm really excited to be here to talk about it today. Same. I think it's also in terms of uh, this topic, it's, uh, you know, my opinion is often a, a misdiagnosed um, mm -hmm. you know, issue. It's often not treated in a, in, a, in, a, in a good way. And, you know, often male patients, you know, suffer needlessly for a long time, often mm -hmm. many, many years without the appropriate treatment when, you know, most of the time the, the condition is treatable. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because one of the areas that attracts me so much to, to this particular area is about how people really have such significant needs and their quality of life is affected so much. And uh, there's so much that we can do to help. And I wish that I, I would love to do everything we can to make it as easy as possible to be able to have people to access the care they really need because there is so much help and so much hope for these folks. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, you know, I, I like I like to say for this condition, we kind of work as a as a team or as a village, you know, to get to get a patient better. You know, physical therapy, um, physiatrist, uh, the, the you know people in urology, uh, acupuncturist, psychologist. Uh, it's it's important to get everybody on board with these patients to really help them get back on track. Absolutely, behavioral health also for our wonderful psychotherapists, sex therapists, can do amazing work to really important members of the team too. I agree a hundred percent. So, so to kind of get down to, to, to the nuts and bolts of, you know, chronic uh, abacterial prostatitis, or as we call it, chronic pelvic pain syndrome, AKA CPPS to make it a bit easier if we keep talking about it today. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really, um, it's really characterized as chronic uh, pelvic pain uh, and bladder symptoms in male patients for over a three months period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, you know, and it's, it's characterized as non-bacterial, meaning, you know, typically urology will see these patients, do a full workup, semen analysis, uh, um, urinalysis, uh, and, and the like. Uh, and there's no signs of infection whatsoever. You know, often these patients are still treated with courses of antibiotics. Yes. Uh, and it's, it's a, you know, and it's, you know, because, you know, from my experience, a lot of uh, providers or healthcare providers in the urology world say, listen, it, it sounds like prostatitis, let's treat it with mm -hmm. antibiotics and see what happens. Right. And unfortunately, these patients have no benefit. They don't get any mm -hmm. better. So then they sometimes even try an even stronger antibiotic to say that must not have been the right antibiotic. But unfortunately, as, you're, as we know, the problem in these situations is not actually an infection. Right, absolutely. Uh, and there's, there's a, you know, there's kind of a long, relatively a long list of, you know, conditions and causes that can actually result in these symptoms. Uh, you know, and just to, you know, get a bit more information about this, it, you know, th this condition occurs in about 5 to 10% of otherwise mm -hmm. healthy males. You know, male patients tend to under-report it. They tend just to, mm -hmm. you know, suck it up. They don't want to talk to their friends about it. They don't want to talk to their family about it. And they, you know, as I said before, kind of suffered needlessly for a long period of time yes. uh, without seeking any treatment whatsoever. Mm -hmm. yep. In general, especially, I find that these gentlemen will wait much longer to, in, than maybe even their female counterparts to come because some of these things are hard to talk about. It's hard to talk about your erectile dysfunction or your pain with erections and pain with ejaculation. 
You know, with uh, your urinary symptoms. There's people that don't hang out. Our society has not normalized discussing these things. So by the time that folks come to us, I find that a lot of times they're much further along in this process and in worse shape because they didn't feel comfortable reaching out to get help sooner. Absolutely right. And, you know, it, you know part of that, too, is because, you know, again, they've been seen by practitioners uh, who mm -hmm. said, listen, there's nothing else we can do for you. And, you know, the, the, the male patients that we see often have nowhere else to go. At least they feel that way and they, they suffer needlessly and the, the, the symptoms go on for a very long period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where we kind of jump in and hopefully help them out. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and so I guess, you know, the first thing we should potentially cover are symptoms uh, mm -hmm. of this condition. And there's, again, there's a relatively long list. We can kind of go back and forth if you want to. Uh, <laughs> You know, it, symptoms often involve penile, testicular, uh, mm -hmm. perineal discomfort, mm -hmm. pain in the abdominal wall, especially lower abdominal wall, uh, groin and low back, mm -hmm. uh, pain with ejaculation, yes. uh, weak, as you had mentioned before, weak uh, ejaculatory stream, mm -hmm. uh, pain with erection, uh, pain or burning sometimes in, uh, with urination, mm -hmm. uh, bladder, urgency, bladder urgency and frequency, um, the, the need to urinate at nighttime, which is called nocturia, mm -hmm. and also um, rectal pain and constipation. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so many of these folks that come to us will say, I think I must have a hernia. There are, must be, we have a whole bunch of ideas. And so many folks have said, okay, I think if it's not prostatitis, I must have an STD. Which STD might I be missing? Because they know it's not supposed to burn when you urinate or when you ejaculate. You know, and that's really, it's a, it's a really, really tricky one for a lot of folks. It is. And, you know, we often see patients, both you and I do, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if they haven't been worked up for an STD or urinary tract mm -hmm. infection, of course, we always get that worked up right away. Absolutely. But most, most of the time, the patients we see have been worked up and everything's mm -hmm. been negative and they keep mm -hmm. thinking, well, they must have missed something for the work. Right. Why is it still going on? Right, right. Uh, yeah, and so, you know, and to, to, that kind of gets us into causes of this condition. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, causes can often include prior infection. You know, some patients we see do, have, do initially have uh, bacterial or acute bacterial prostatitis. Mm -hmm. That is treated with antibiotics. Um, that resolves and follow-up workup is negative. Um, mm -hmm. Often nervous system dysfunction uh, or injury can cause the, the condition. Mm -hmm. uh, often what's called pelvic floor hypertonia, which simply means increased tone of the pelvic floor, a.k.a. muscle spasm, can cause the condition. Absolutely. Uh, can I rip on that for a moment, if that's all right? Sure, absolutely. Jump in. <gasps> so from the standpoint, a lot of times we think about the muscles like our bicep muscles, but the muscles, the pelvic floor is an area which, which is able to hold up and support. It's crucial for erectile function. It's crucial for being able to relax, to pass stool. But sometimes for many of us, it gets so tight that it really interferes with the function that causes significant pain. And most of us have experienced maybe like a really tight muscle knot up in, in our upper trapezius muscle when we're stressed. And it can radiate pain to our heads. It can make it hard to move our arms. And these muscles we're talking about, right, there's just a skeletal, they're just skeletal muscles. But when they get tight like that, they interfere with erectile function, they interfere with urinary function, they can even tie in with constipation, they can cause all these issues just from the muscles being really, really tight. Absolutely. And I, I always tell patients too who have uh, muscle floor hypertonia or spasms, mm -hmm. it's, it's really tough to, you know, you can feel a tight muscle in your back or your mm -hmm. neck. It's tough to feel a tight muscle in your pelvic floor. Yes. And, yes. and often, you know, in the symptoms that kind of evolve with that, it's, mm -hmm. it's unless you know about pelvic uh, pain, like, you know, like we do, mm -hmm. it's, it's often tough to associate those symptoms with a, a tight pelvic floor. Yes, yes, yes. And I love one of the light bulb moments when we're evaluating someone and come and, and do, when I do our evaluation, which I think we'll talk about more shortly, is to be able to find some of those really tight, painful spots. And people say, oh, my goodness, that's my pain. I had no idea until they right. come and find it. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, both you and I, you know, do, do, do a pretty thorough physical examination. Mm -hmm. We see patients, you know, again, most of the patients that we see uh, have just had a prostate exam, if even that. And that's mm -hmm. pretty much it. 
Uh, the right. nerves and the muscles in the pelvic floor have not been evaluated thoroughly. Uh, and patients, when you know, I first bring up the topic of a you know muscle or nerve issue, they go, "What's that? What's that in the pelvic floor?" Mm. I didn't know I had muscles in the pelvic floor. Right, uh, right. It's you know that's when we bring out the model, go through the the anatomy, mm -hmm. and kind of get them up to speed. And you know they're often just amazed about you know what could potentially be causing their symptoms. Absolutely. And I'd like to throw in also that sometimes what can tie in people who have back pain and problems, hip problems, these things can sometimes tie in really significantly with the pelvic floor problems, both because with the nerves that come in through the pelvic floor that come from the mid area of the back, as well as the lower area of the back, those can absolutely cause major problems with the pelvic floor. When our hip labral tears, there's a bunch of pieces. So part of, I know what both of us do with our evaluation is we take a look and say, what's going on with, with the back? What's going on with the hips? Because sometimes there's additional areas that really tie in and really contribute to this problem in a meaningful way. And luckily there are areas we can really help with. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, as you kind of, uh, you know, alluded to just a few minutes ago, you know, things like disc herniations in the low back, sports hernias, mm -hmm. uh, hip issues, uh, they mm -hmm. all can definitely contribute and even result in, uh, you know, chronic uh, pelvic pain syndromes. Absolutely. Uh, and so, so kind of going forward with that, you know, we, we discussed uh, the, you know, the symptoms, the causes, uh, there are some risk factors involved as well with chronic pelvic pain mm -hmm. syndrome, aka a bacterial chronic prostatitis. Uh, those often include uh, young or early adulthood, uh, previous prostatitis, as I mentioned earlier, uh, infection of the urinary tract, reproductive mm -hmm. system, stress often plays a big role, especially with, you know, with COVID recently. I'm sure you've seen the same. I've seen a big uptake in uh, chronic pelvic pain syndromes. Absolutely. Uh, patients are stressed out. Uh, and they're also sitting uh, for a long period of time at home for mm -hmm. the, you know, everybody's working remotely these days. So often on a bad chair, hours yes. at a time, and it really flares up the pelvic floor. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We've had a lot of people with, because there's, there's so few options at home. So a lot of people are sitting on sofas and their whole posture is tilted back to such a way that problems that have never been there before began to arise. Right. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, also other risk factors are um, prior surgeries and male mm -hmm. patients, you know, things like prostatectomies, hernia surgery, uh, lumbar disc herniation surgery, mm -hmm. uh, trauma, and even exercise, like, you know, patients who bike a lot, patients mm -hmm. who, male patients who go to the gym and do uh, heavy squats. Heavy lifting, yeah. Heavy lifting, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I see often the rowers who sit in that hard mm -hmm. surface for a period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, they can also contribute and even cause pelvic pain type conditions. Yep. And our enthusiast runners who start off a little bit too enthusiastically with their marathon training program and are hitting those hills going hard, even that, even though there's not direct pressure to the pelvic floor, all that additional workload, especially when taken on quickly, can really cause or contribute to these problems. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, and that being said, um, you know, complications. There's some things that can also kind of contribute to make the symptoms even worse. Yeah. Again, you know, anxiety or depression. We, uh, we mm -hmm. often see a lot of patients here in the clinic who have often uncontrolled anxiety. And uh, that is a known contributor to pelvic pain type conditions and pelvic floor pain. Uh, the inability to get uh, and or maintain an erection is a complication mm -hmm. of pelvic floor um, symptoms as well as chronic uh, pelvic uh, pain syndromes. Uh, and changes uh, uh, in sperm and semen uh, counts can also lead to infertility if this is not addressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And for that one, we wanted to assure our, our viewers that, that just because you're having pelvic pain does not mean that you're going to lose your ability to be fertile. But it's a wonderful idea to come get checked out and make sure that we get everything moving the way that it needs to. Right. And that kind of, you know, segues into the whole treatment aspect. Yes. Uh, which is, you know, that, that can be pretty ex extensive as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we'll start with, you know, physical therapy. I'm going to defer to you to, to talk yes. about that. You got it. And then I can't wait to hear your input afterwards. Absolutely. So. For physical therapy, we like to take a thorough look at the person as a whole. So, of course, we're going to take a detailed history, and we like to ask questions, deep questions, um, which includes details about erectile function and, and, and specifics tied in with that, questions about if there was a sex injury. 
physical therapy is pelvic floor physical therapy is a safe place. So um, for anyone going and getting help, I encourage you be open and honest with your physical therapist. Um, and we will we'll be very happy to help. And that's the way that we can best help you. So uh, we take a careful look and see what's going on throughout the spine and the hips, like we discussed, what a big tie in that can have. Um, also in terms of the organs, so sometimes uh, helping to make sure that, that everything is moving well in terms of your bladder and your colon. And then of course, we take a look at the pelvic floor. So in terms of for physical therapy, we really are, we're, we're experts with our wonderful colleagues. We're experts in terms of being able to figure out how, what's moving. Is it able to activate? Can your pelvic floor relax? We look from the outside. And then if, if patients are comfortable, we will also do internal rectal exams where we'll have a thorough look and see exactly which muscles are tight and which muscles are causing your problems. So we have, there's a lot of tools in our toolbox. My favorite tool is the brain. My second favorite tool are my hands uh, because it is, it's wonderful to be able to find the areas that are tight and then gently in a trauma informed respectful way, help to free up all the tissues that need to be freed up. We also certainly help to retrain. Um, these, again, these are muscles. We can take the stigma out of it right now. These are muscles just like the muscles in your upper traps. So if you hurt your arm, maybe we would do some stretching for it. Maybe we would do some massage. Then we would retrain you when you were ready and able to move. We'd retrain those muscles and how to work well. And it's the same thing for the pelvic floor. So we get wonderful results in terms of being able to help free up any nerves that are restricted, to free up any muscles that are tight, to empower our patients, to be really well informed, to know how to manage their condition and get better and better on their own at home between visits. Um, and then also to be able to really return to function, both in terms of function with using their pelvic floor to support erections, et cetera, and also to get back to the stuff they wanna be doing, like their marathon running, like their rowing, et cetera, in ways that are safe and healthy for them. Absolutely. You know, and I, when, every time I see a, a, a patient here in our clinic, you know, one of the first things I do if they haven't already is, is recommend seeing a physical therapist because uh, that to me is integral in a patient's recovery. Mm -hmm. And to see someone who knows the, the anatomy of the muscles and nerves yeah. in the before, now to actually address that makes a world of a difference with the patient, especially one who has chronic pelvic pain syndrome. Absolutely. And I'll throw in there that um, for pelvic floor therapists, make sure the pelvic floor therapist you see is also experienced treating men and has uh, expertise in that area as well. Because there, while there are some ma there are major similarities between the male and the female pelvic floor, then uh, there are also some differences, especially towards the front part and things that support erectile function. So we definitely suggest that you make sure the therapist you see is also skilled in treating men. And while we're using the word men, I'm gonna go ahead and just throw in there, what we're talking about is people with penises. So um, I, so I just, want, I just wanna put that in there, that we recognize that gender is a spectrum and, um, but it's, it's easier for us to say men than people with penises. But what we mean is treating people with penises. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> so. And, you know, and, and, you know, aside from physical therapy, uh, there's other, you know, options in terms of treatment. Mm -hmm. one, is one is medication management. And, you yes. know, we often will see patients who want to get some medications on board, uh, potentially. Mm -hmm. uh, we often use what are called alpha blockers, like uh, terazosin and uh, alfuzosin. Uh, and what they do is they actually relax the, uh, the muscle of the, um, the bladder and prostate. Mm -hmm. uh, I often uh, like to prescribe uh, what are called neuromodulator medications. Uh, and these medications essentially downregulate uh, the, the kind of hypersensitivity in the pelvic floor. If you've had, you know, muscle spasm or just pain in general in the pelvic floor for a long period of time, everything is essentially upregulated. So you really want to kind of calm things down. So medications like Lyrica, a.k.a. Pregabalin, mm -hmm. uh, Cymbalta, which is also called Diloxetine, and metriptyline uh, and the like are often very effective in really just kind of downregulating just a really hypersensitized uh, pelvic floor. They can be amazing. Yeah, works. It tends to work really well. Mm -hmm. uh, we also put on board a short course of medications or NSAIDs like Celebrex and ibuprofen to decrease mm -hmm. inflammation. Um, I often prescribe uh, muscle relaxer suppositories. 
I, you know, and you know, we do a mix of medications. Some of my favorites are Valium combined with uh, Baclofen. Mm -hmm. We do that because you know, inserting the uh, suppository rectally, you're getting right to the crux of the spasm. The, the muscles absorb the medication directly, tend to be very effective. Um, I also consider things like phytotherapies, which are, which are natural supplements. One of the ones I commonly use is a supplement called quercetin. Uh, quercetin is a natural antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. Uh, a lot of the recent literature has shown it's been very effective in uh, male patients who have chronic pelvic pain syndromes, because essentially it washes out the uh, oxidants and it also washes out uh, the inflammatory material in the pelvic floor. Uh, and I'm giving a lot of information at once here. Um, we in our clinic uh, also do injections. Oh, uh, amazing, amazing, amazing work. Yeah, and, and in certain patients, they have great benefits and outcomes. Um, we do injections to both address the muscle floor hypertonia, but to also address uh, nerve irritation, i.e. pedental nerve inflammation, ileoinguinal, genital ephemeral, the list goes on. Uh, the muscle injections for hypertonia are what are called hydrodissection and trigger point injections. So essentially, we inject a certain amount of fluid into a contracted muscle. Uh, by injecting a, a certain amount of fluid, we're essentially stretching the muscle out. Uh, and the goal is to get the muscle to fire normally again. And by doing that, it promotes blood flow, oxygenation, and also helps with the pH balance in the pelvic floor. Mm -hmm. uh, and the injection series, and again, nerve blocks, do often pay, play a really beneficial role in patients who do have uh, chronic pelvic pain. Uh, you know, it's also important, I think, to get on board, as I touched on a bit earlier, um, you know, psychology or a cognitive behavioral therapist. If someone's had chronic pelvic pain for a long period of time, you know, often does affect erections, sexual function, and the like. Uh, and it's always important, I think, to get someone on board to help address those issues. Also, just to kind of get patients to relax and to kind of breathe into the pelvic floor when it's tense. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it really makes a big difference. I completely agree. And some people will say to me, I'm worried that this is this, is this all in my head. And um, I like to remind them, well, first of all, everything's in our heads. If we cut off our heads, your pelvic floor wouldn't be bothering you at all. That's how we process things. It's a good point. <laughs> In addition to that, though, um, it, it's, it's, an, it's really so beneficial. Sometimes when people have been in a certain amount of pain for a certain amount of time, it would be abnormal if they weren't struggling. I mean, there's normal reasons behind this. And I think it is so important that we normalize some. There's still, I think, is some stigma, especially with men, in terms of seeking help for any mental health services. And, and, and this is such, it's such a helpful adjunct. And it was, again, what I tell people is, if, if you weren't struggling with this, that would be some, I would be concerned. If you weren't having a hard time, I would be concerned because it's a lot that people go through. So I think yeah. it is wonderful. So we'll just go ahead and just take that stigma right out of it. And it's wonderful in terms of being able to have the, the holistic interdisciplinary support. So we can all talk with each other and we can all collaborate to really give the very, very best well-rounded care. Absolutely. And I always tell patients that I see in the clinic that nothing's off limits to talk about. Mm -hmm. You know, I always say, listen, we have no modesty in this clinic. You know, <laughs> we're going to have some frank discussions about how this happened, what's going on. I want the exact symptoms. So we can really help you out and, you know, really get you to the, the finish line. So you're symptom free. That, that's the goal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Really important. And yeah. then, yeah. And as I also said before, too, it really does take a team approach because, uh, you know, my experience is that just, you know, monotherapy or just one type of therapy doesn't tend to cut it. Mm -hmm. You want everybody on board. Uh, to me, it's a team approach, working with the physical therapist, you know, a physiatrist, like someone in my field, a mm -hmm. urologist if necessary. We sometimes get even a GI person on board to take a look at things or just some, any kind of abdominal discomfort. Uh, definitely um, a psychotherapist, uh, sometimes even a psychiatrist who specializes in pelvic pain disorders. Mm -hmm. uh, we all work together. And again, the goal is to address all uh, facets of the pelvic pain or what's contributing to the pelvic pain and kind of holding a person back from recovery. Absolutely. And I know that there's countless patients that I see 
I, I love the way that we all work together and collaborate. There's countless patients that I see where I'm having trouble helping the muscles free up. But then after adding some of the medications you're talking about, and certainly in terms of with the injections, with the hydrodissection of the related nerves and the injections into the muscles, it's the combination, which is the special sauce to really help free things up and open up and give people their lives back. Absolutely. And also a lot of reassurance too, because it often it does take a little bit of time to turn things around. Um, mm -hmm. But my experience is that the majority of patients that are treated with this approach have great outcomes. Yes. Yeah. And yes, absolutely. And especially as we do this, part of our careful evaluation is making sure that we pick the most appropriate people for the most appropriate interventions that we do. Because not everything will be appropriate for everyone, right. which is why we each do such a careful evaluation and thorough assessment to make sure that we're doing the right custom tailored approach for each person. Absolutely right. And, and you know, as you just said, uh, you know, our examinations and evaluations are pretty comprehensive. We look at all the potential causes of pelvic pain, uh, you know, very thorough examination. And that, you know, the, to me, the examination really gives me the most information about what's mm -hmm. potentially causing the problem. Absolutely, yeah. Jessica, this was a great conversation. Yeah, so I'd love to talk more in the future about other topics that affect Be great. Erectile I, dysfunction. I've uh, got a list for you. Well, yeah, fantastic. Uh -huh. Let's make it a date. That'd be great. Sounds perfect. I hope that everyone will uh, come join us back then. And of course, any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Yes. Again, I'm, I'm based in New York City. And Jessica, mm -hmm. your, your location again is in Maryland, correct? I'm actually in Washington, D.C. Washington, you think you're Maryland, okay. Yes, well, I'm very, very close to the great, there's a great uh, pelvic rehab center just right up in Bethesda, which is a stone's yeah. throw. I can throw Super stones to, to both, to different states, absolutely. So I'll love hearing that. If there's any topics that you uh, would like to hear more about, that our viewers would like to hear more about, let us know. We'd be happy to custom tailor some IG lives for the specific things that is most important to you. Absolutely. Like I said, we have a, we have a pretty long list of topics to discuss, so mm -hmm. nothing's off limits. We're more than happy to, to, to chat about it. Great. All right. Well, this was fun. Thanks, Jessica, so much for, uh, for, for discussing the topic with me. Really appreciate it. I look forward to next time. Have a good day. Take care. Thanks. You too. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>